to use a stamp. His doctors tried everything. Powdered crab eyes, pearl julep, and sal volatile. Nothing worked. William died on March 8th. For centuries afterwards, Scots drank toasts to the mole, the little gentleman in the black velvet coat, because it had caused the hated king's death. The plain, dull, and obstinate Anne, who now succeeded to the throne, was the last of the Stuart monarchs. Although she was married and had given birth to many children, Anne was probably a lesbian. All her close companions were women. A crude pamphlet was written about Queen Anne's orientation. When as Queen Anne, of great renown, Great Britain's scepter swayed, beside the church she dearly loved a ch dirty chambermaid. Anne, it seems, was the girl in lesbian relationships. She was completely dominated by her most famous female companion, Sarah Churchill, Duchess of Marlborough, a very strong-minded woman and ancestor to Winston Churchill. Sarah and her husband, John, had, had Queen and just where they wanted her. Anne and Sarah had been childhood friends. Sarah used their friendship to grab all sorts of titles and rewards. These titles came with plenty of money and land. Sarah also engineered a dukedom for her husband. He became Duke of Marlborough in 1689. Later, when Anne was queen, the Duke won four splendid victories against the French. With this, he shot to fame as England's greatest soldier. Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire was built especially for him as a reward. Queen Anne disliked pomp and pageantry. She hated the formality of the royal court, so she relaxed by playing a game with Sarah Churchill. Anne called herself Mrs. Freeman. Sarah called herself Mrs. Morley. They pretended they were not queen and subject, but rather two ordinary women who enjoyed a chat and gossip and a game of cards. This was a mistake. Sarah took the game seriously. Anne was a bit of a mouse, plain and awkward. Sarah was a beauty and knew it. So it was not long before she was boldly ordering her, the queen around and throwing her weight about. This could not go on indefinitely. In 1707, Anne and Sarah had a big row. Sarah stormed out of the court. The quarrel was so serious that Sarah and her husband left England too. They did not come back until after Anne's death. But someone else was waiting to take over from Sarah Churchill. Mrs. Abigail Masham was a relative of Sarah's. Indeed, it had been Sarah who arranged for Mrs. Massam to be appointed Women of the Bedchamber to Queen Anne. Sarah soon found it was the wrong move. Abigail Massam wormed her way into the Queen's affections, telling terrible tales about Sarah to the Queen. Sarah was furious. She wrote of the black ingratitude of Mrs. Massam, a woman that I took out of a garret and saved from starving. But Abigail remained Queen Anne's closest companion for seven years. In that time, she lined her own pocket with profits from financial deals. She kept other would-be friends from the Queen away by plotting against him. But when Anne died, Mrs. Maham's powers vanished overnight. Anne's health had, had never been good. It was made worse by her long series of miscarriages and stillbirths. The deaths of her children depressed her greatly. In 1708, her husband, Prince George of Denmark, died. Anne had adored him and was never the same again. Anne's childlessness was not just a personal problem, it was a national one as well. In fact, it was an emergency. The Catholic Stuarts were still around, still aiming to seize the English throne. To prevent them from succeeding, a Protestant heir had to be found. The nearest was Sophia, Electress of Hanover in Germany. Her mother, Elizabeth, had been a daughter of King James I, the first Stuart monarch. Queen Anne hated Sophia. She would not even allow her name to be mentioned at court. So she was there. She was delighted when Sophia died in June of 1714, since she now would not be Queen of England. But within three months... Anne herself was dead. The king who now succeeded to the throne as the first Hanoverian monarch of England was Sophia's son, George Lewis, elector of Hanover. George was Protestant, which is what Parliament wanted. It was enough to keep the English loyal to him when James Edward Stuart and his followers, the Jacobites, attempted but failed to seize the throne in 1715. But George did not have much else to, about him to appeal to his subjects. They had endured bad kings, mad 